All right, guys, everybody was wondering, what is that guy gonna do with that big, uh, tiny little turbine? Um, right now, I am making a mount for it. This is going to be a mount for a trailer tongue. Since it's not heavy, doesn't pitch around a lot because it doesn't have a tail. This is for the vertical access turbine, wind turbine, VAWT. 400 watt, um, probably about 150, 200 watt, but it's for purpose of keeping my batteries hot in my RV. And right now, we were gonna use it on our garage, but I'm thinking, man, when I get back down to Texas, it sucks when I'm gone for three days and come home and the batteries are dead. All right, so look at this. Making one here. Making another piece here to go on the other side. I'm gonna show you the put together pieces here. Where that will mount with numerous uh, bolts going into it or screws, machine screws, onto the side. There's also going to be some counter bracing, top and bottom, and a cleat down to bottom. This is two inch pipe, oil filled pipe, and it is what they use to transfer the paraffins. So I've got lots of it. And this right here will have the inch and a half pipe go down inside of it. And there's going to be a stop down at the end. The wires will hook right into a controller in my RV, my 35 foot Jayco. So here we go. Let's get this put together. Go ahead and take the two pieces of the quarter wall angle and we're going to weld them on like a set of ears or a, a, a frame mount to mount this piece of two inch pipe on. So you'll see here that I'm going to tag them on both ends and then I'm going to fill weld here and then we're going to put a piece of plate across the back to just tie them all together. And it'll be very strong and the frame of that trailer is quarter inch, two and a half by six inch boxed frame that's on the trailer. It's going to be very strong for this. It, it will hold up for the trailer being towed down the road, so we'll be fine with a 22-pound turbine hanging off the top of it. We go to get the other side. Okay guys, I am out here in the daytime now and you can see that that mount was a successful mount and I didn't grind it down, but heavy filled welds front and rear on it, mounted on pretty strong. I went ahead and I used these little screws here on the outside to get it mounted so I could square it up. Um, so when the trailer is perfectly level, it's level. Now all of these little bolts here can be twisted out to loosen the pipe and then the pipe can be lifted out before we transport. It has a quick connector we've installed inside of it to change and remove all this so they can drive down the road with just this part here mounted permanently on the trailer and the pipe gone as we transport. So setting on there pretty good, really strong, uh, strongest part of the trailer technically. And um, that is the mount, but here is the cool part. Ah, there we go, and it's been out here running for a good solid um, about an hour and a half, and out of an hour and a half, it's already charged the batteries all the way up, and has um, not caused any issues. We're running around 12 to 18 mile per hour winds right now, 10 and a half, 11 feet off the ground. We've got a house in the way, trees everywhere in the way, so they're not being very helpful to me. But here's the cool part. Y'all want to see does it produce power? Um, well, it brought the batteries up so quick it went on brake. So right there's the brake light. There is the little charge controller I'm using with it. It was provided with it. And we are at, here's the deal. Um, no wattage in, no amperage in right now because it's on brake. And it'll give you here 134.2 watts and it's two watt hours already that's pretty good 9.61 amps 9.61 amps and it's currently at 14.55 volts so if you look over here that charge controller there it shuts off at 14.1 and this one goes on break i believe what does it say here at 15 volts however not very accurate is it 14.55 is it's on break right now so those are the two old batteries that I restored. This one over here is about five or six years old. This one here is closer to eight years old. And they run my lighting 
up in here, up in my, my carport. Um, and we run all the lighting off of that. It's very bright, big, long light strip. So um, any of the stuff that I'm showing in this video, I'll put the links to it down there. So y'all just look. I have like an Amazon link where the crap I buy it gives you a direct link to it, and sometimes the prices are a lot cheaper, so I just put them down there for you. Um, just, just doing fine. I was surprised. Um, I, I thought it wasn't going to do as good with all this crap in the way and being so low to the ground, but it's doing pretty good. I imagine if I didn't have it in this uh, stuff around it, it would do a little better. But what the hell? They're supposed to work. Vots are supposed to work like this one does. So is it worth it? That's the whole question. Is this worth it? Um, was that mount pretty simple to do? Hell yeah. Um, is this strap stout? I can't even wiggle it. So yeah, I think it's stout. That's schedule 40 right there. And I've got my big Texas RV. This is the one I haul down to my property in Texas and stay in while I'm working down there. And we're doing a remodel on the house. So uh, in the process, I am using it as a base camp, sorta, for just me uh, and my wife. Uh, the kids are still in the house with my oldest one. Uh, she's 30. So the uh, the cool thing is that it worked. Now, is the Chinese lantern worth it? Well, the same company that makes that little thing right there, and it, that's just so wicked the way it looks because that thing's moving pretty good. Looks like it's barely moving. Um, the same company that makes that one. Now, there, there's a lot of knockoffs of that same one. They are the company that made that one. So this one here. Now this is a wind turbine for you guys on my channel, my subscribers. It is worth every damn dime that you pay for it. It is absolutely bulletproof. This one over here is a Thermodyne and that one over there is a Thermodyne also. Both, all of these are producing really good power. This one is in, in the prop wash of that one and still producing really good. It has seen serious winds, serious output, output hitting 1100 watt peaks. Now peaks don't count, but it has seen that and it produces extremely well. It's an ME 500. They make the ME 400 and 500s. I put a link in my videos. Go look at my videos or look at the little square right up in here somewhere. You can click on it. It'll be a link to that video and go check them all out. This has now been up for 11 months and it kicks ass. I'm proud of it. So worth its money. Uh, I got it for sale for 220 now they're about 300 but they're still worth 500 They're better than and the same size generator head as the ones that they sell out of uh, Texas and Missouri. This one's 300 bucks. theirs is 500 bucks. This one produces 10 times the power, theirs produces. What do you think? And this one isn't made in Vietnam. That's made in, this one here is a Singapore or Chinese made product. It's not Vietnam, which is really cheap shit. So. Look at the puppies. Yes, I train border collies. Is it worth it? The question is, is it worth it? Um, pay no attention to these. These, I, these here I salvage out. That's my good one. So, is that worth it? Hell, I think it is. I'm, I'm thinking that having five amps, six amps, seven amps overnight, when my 700 watts on the roof is not producing, there's 700 on this roof. There'll be three more soon to get a thousand full wattage. And then there's the big battery bank there. And then over here, there's four more batteries in there and there's two there. But I'll show y'all more on that system soon. But this, I think is worth it. I think it has its value. So it's up to you guys, but nine amps coming in in a, in a 12 to 15 mile an hour wind, 16, I think gust were 17. So. I think it'll produce 400 watt, 500 watt, whatever they label it as. Compare this $150 item to a $400 one that spins around, has no slip ring, burns out, and I'll show you some video links to some of those that burn out. Look down below the video and all that linkage down there, and I'll put a bunch of links to videos. Go down the show more, and you'll see uh, wind turbines that burn out. You won't see one of these on the list, and you won't see that one over there that is the uh, ME500 on the list because they don't. Bearings last forever because they're SK bearings and they're quality. So that's my thing. Everything we use on here, I test it. It's worth a try. And just like at the beginning of the video, that worked good. And there's a little cleat at the bottom to keep the uh, uh, pipe from slipping out. And it's just, this is just schedule 40 galvanized pipe.
and that fitting right there, that fitting is a flange fitting that's no weld. So you can look at my other videos and they'll include that too.